So how do we do it in Creatio and how do we approach it in the organization? And what is it for the end user? In the organization, we simply, for the organization, we're simply trying to provide a tool for quick and intelligent automated solution. So we want to give you a tool that given the proper users will be able to utilize it to make better decisions. And for the user, it's easy. Once the tool is there, once the model is there, they can make better decisions. So that's it. The organization gets a tool that allows it to enrich users to make better decisions. And for the user, they simply make those better decisions because ML is implemented. So that's, that's our goal. And that's what we're striving to do. In Creatio, we have some models already implemented and some models we're planning on implementing in the near future. Now, when I speak of near future, it could be three months, it could be six months, depending on various factors, but let's take a look at what is currently implemented. So the data enrichment, we do text processing or named entities, as uh, some may call it. And that's when we read the email. And by looking at the email we've never seen before, we can figure out which part of it is the actual email. Uh, email address. And you might say that, well, that's easy. You can do it with regular expressions and many other things. And it's true. It's easy. Uh, but what about a phone number? Well, it's not that easy anymore if it doesn't follow the same pattern. So somebody will start their phone number with plus one. Somebody will start it with the area code. Somebody will put um, the area code in parentheses. Somebody will not. Some Someone will use a dot to separate. Somebody will use a dash to separate, etc., um, etc. Et and somebody will use, let's say, an X to indicate the extension. Someone uh, might use a dot to indicate the extension. So there's a lot of different formats and variations. And that's just within North America. Now imagine if you're talking about international customers, you have no idea what the customer, how the customer may want to represent their phone number. So you end up writing a lot of those regular expressions. They're very difficult to maintain. And in all fairness, no one's going to sit and do that. Um, so you want some sort of a system to help you to help you with that. So we have contact data enrichment, account data enrichment, and that allows us to look at the text we have not seen in the past and just simply grab the information that we believe is relevant. So enrich your communication option, right? Your phone number, your cell phone number, um, your emails, etc., etc. Now the predictive analytics allows us, or what's implemented already, it's predictive analytics, and that's classification, regression, and predictive scoring. So we can do classification. The example of it is routing off a problem or a complaint from a customer or a request for help or a request for assistance, any of that type. So before we you know, before we start working on it, we have to make sure that we're routing it into uh, to the right person. That helps us. So having the right routing helps us improve customer experience by reducing the amount of time that the request is sitting idle and no one's really doing on it while we're trying to figure out who should be looking at it. So that that's going to be your classification. Uh, regression, we're trying to, uh, we use regression to determine the duration of a particular request. So if we know that we're getting a, um, a request from a customer and it's probably going to take us a little bit longer than the SLA allows us to, then we know about this delay way before we actually go past you. Um, so that's how we're going to use regression. And the predictive scoring allows uh, some of our departments to get the score on how likely or unlikely a particular customer is to transition to a next stage in their sales pipeline or how likely or unlikely someone to react to a particular marketing campaign etc cetera, etc cetera. now predictive analytics next best action next best offer um, that's the part where we can recommend a product for example um, in one of our products in the financial services where we deal with lending, where we deal with borrowings and, and things of that nature, we can recommend products. Now, we can apply this model to recommending physical, tangible goods as well, uh, but it's mostly used in the financial services. And this is where we can recommend next best offer um, or recommend next best action within any pipeline given certain parameters. Now, time series prediction is something that we're going to work on for the future. We're not going to talk about what it is right now. Um, it's probably going to be ready in a little bit, uh, but there was a lot of a lot of work uh, happening on the Creatio side uh, with simplifying how all these models are implemented and to use the user 
all it means is that you will be able to apply AI in a wider range for a wider range of problems and just basically make better decisions. So some of the examples, uh, potential applications uh, for classification and the scoring problems, classifications, various predictions, various allocations to classes, uh, so you can do better routing, so you can do, uh, you can classify emails, incoming emails, you can uh, classify incoming documents, intentions, and things of that nature. So all that, all that great stuff is going to go into classification. The scoring is where you're trying to get a number of some sort. Um, so opportunity scoring, lead scoring, how likely are you to progress uh, to the next stage in our sales pipeline or your sales pipeline? Um, what's the likelihood that we're going to resolve a ticket on time? What's the likelihood that we're going to get paid on time? And things of that nature. And that's very important. Um, think of just a, a simple accounts receivable um, and, and people always concerned about how many days outstanding for your accounts receivable. Well, you can apply AI for let's say your finance department to tell them that yeah I think that my average days outstanding is going to be let's say 45 days when or 47 days when my terms are net 45 or things of that nature. Regression um, we can do cost estimates price estimates um, so very uh, very popular example like I've mentioned before is determining your uh, real estate price a price for real estate um, so everything uh, where you estimate a dollar value or a number value that's not from one to zero or basically from uh, one to a hundred in terms of percent but the actual value um, that's all regression and then obviously the recommendation system where you can recommend next best offer you can recommend um, similar customers you can recommend similar products etc etc so some of the internal uh, successes that I want to share with you we have improved, significantly improved our lead to meeting conversion. And what that means is that there is a lead generation department um, who does certain activities and their single task is to get uh, the client to meet with us face to face um, in a virtual environment, doesn't matter as long as we can get that meeting. And before it was a wild guess, but now with the help of AI, we have significantly improved our conversion rate. So we can concentrate on leads that are that are better, uh, better in terms of conversion. We can spend less time on leads that are never going to convert, uh, and we can dedicate our efforts to providing a better service to uh, leads who actually are likely to deal with us. The same thing goes. We've seen significant reduction in terms of time and effort in routing um, internal requests or uh, complaints or things of that nature. Um, so we can now uh, reduce the amount of staff that is working in the first line of support. Um, and even if we don't reduce it right away, then we provide a better experience for the customer by uh, reducing the amount of time that it takes for us to route it to the correct um, to the correct department who's actually capable of resolving the problem. All right, so that's enough of a theory. Now what I want to do is now I want to show you how this whole thing can be done in Creatio. So there are a couple of things that are going to happen now. I will provide you with the file. Uh, we're going to be doing sentiment analysis. So we're going to be processing text to figure out if the text speaks positively of us or negatively. So the text is going to be an example of around 1000 tweets um, and what we want to do is want to figure out if the tweet is good or the tweet is bad. Um, it's a very simple problem uh, for machine learning to solve uh, but it demonstrates how we can apply um, the AI in a very straightforward way. So we're going to go through uh, data import, we're going to go through data processing, we're going to go through training, and then we're going to try to do some prediction where we're going to get a score of what the system thinks that the tweet is good or the tweet is bad. You may have seen some similar examples on the other platforms, um, but uh, we're going to try to um, do this whole thing in ours. So in order for us to start with this, we need to import some data. Um, so we're going to start our next session by quickly creating a section that we can import this data into. Then we're going to import the data, then we're going to train the model, and we're going to see how the prediction is going to go.